you ever have the need to execute things in a certain order, then the FIFO queue is for you. The FIFO, or first in first out queue, allows you to create a list of things to execute, and then allows you to execute them in the order in which the items arrive. To get a FIFO queue into your program, you can click the logic folder under the program view, type in the speed key Q, as in Q-U-E, and hit enter. Alternatively, you can expand the memory folder under logic symbols, and then click and drag the FIFO queue over to the detail view. As we mentioned earlier, the FIFO queue is a memory symbol, and this is because it remembers the order in which these select inputs go high. You can think of the FIFO queue kind of like the line at the DMV, where the select inputs represent the people waiting to be seen, and the top output tells you which number is going to be called next. Taking the analogy a little bit further, the clear line would be like the DMV closing hours because the DMV doesn't want to see anybody after those doors shut. This is a little bit confusing to understand, so let's build a quick example program just to see how it functions. I'm going to drive the enable line of the FIFO queue with a toggle, and I'm going to bring the number of inputs down to three. Note that the number of select inputs must match the number of select outputs. The rest of the inputs on the FIFO queue will be driven from the outputs of an X panel. And now I'll take the analog outputs of the FIFO queue and put them on the analog inputs of the X panel. And I almost forgot to take the outputs of the Q and put them back on the X panel. That would have been a catastrophe. And that's it, so let's compile and upload to the processor. Okay, with the program running, let's take a look at how the FIFO Q behaves. First, you'll notice with the enable line off that pulsing any of these inputs has no effect on the outputs, which is kind of boring. But once we set the enable line high, that's when the magic happens. We can build our list and then execute it. So, for example, let's say that we triggered the inputs in the order 1, 2, three. And then if we pop through these outputs, we notice that they go off in the order one, two, three. Now that's not very exciting, so let's go a little bit bigger and bolder. If we trigger the inputs in the order one, four, two, and three, we notice that as we pop through them, the outputs go off in the order one, four, two, three. And what's interesting about the FIFO queue is that if you have your list already built, then re-triggering any of these inputs removes it from the list. So if I re-triggered input number two, we notice that the number of items in our list drops to three. If I re-trigger input number three, output number three re is removed from the list, and I can do this until everything is taken off. Pressing the clear button after you've already compiled the list basically diminishes your list, gets rid of it, nothing is on it anymore, and it sets the FIFO queue in its original state. Let's say that you've built up a list and you have it exactly the way you like it, but you don't want the re-triggering of any of these inputs to affect what's on your list. You can set the enable line low, and then the select inputs going into the FIFO queue have no effect on what's currently on the list. But take note that while the inputs have no effect, the clear and pop buttons will still work. The clear button will clear everything out of the list, and the pop button will still go through all of the elements in order. The FIFO queue is especially useful for things like projector polling. Most projectors don't like it when you send more than one command every 30 seconds. So what you could do is tie your command triggers into the FIFO queue, and then have the pop button pulsed every 30 seconds. This way, you ensure that you're not over polling your projector. 